Hello and welcome to The One Show with Matt Baker and Alex Jones. Now tonight's guest is about to receive a Lifetime Achievement Award for his incredible songbook that includes hits like these. Morning has broken like the first morning. I'm being followed by a moonshot, moonshot, a moonshot. All the times that I've cried, keeping all the things I knew inside. It's hard, but it's harder to ignore it. And they are just a handful of Cat Stevens' early classics. He then went on to change his name, turn his back on his music, only, retur only to return to the spotlight once again, though. Please welcome Youssef Islam. <laughs> well, nice to have you with us. It's lovely, lovely yes. to see you, Yusuf, it really is. Now, obviously, we're going to talk a lot about your music and your career, but we'll start on a, on a sombre note, uh, if you don't mind, because obviously you're known for your humanitarian work as well, and you must be watching these images that we're seeing in the Mediterranean with a real sense of kind of helplessness. I mean, in your eyes, what can be done here? Yeah, well, this is not a new story in a way. It's been going on a long time. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, it has... Uh, built up, and now we have, we have this incredible, you know, terrible tragedy of a hundred lives, and so now it's become, you know, a, a, a very prominent, especially before the elections. And now you've got people talking about mig immigration. But it's, it's, uh, you know, the problem goes back. It's uh, if I was an engineer, you know, it'd be like there's a there's a blockage mm. somewhere, mm -hmm. and with the blockage, if you're not careful, it'll break, right. you know, and then suddenly you're flooded, and and so it's it's. And there are very few, it seems, politicians these days that know how to mm. engineer, you know, the society or, or somehow balance international relationships in such, in such a way that we don't have these blockages. We need more plumbers, you know, good, good philosophical plumbers, Absolutely. not politicians. But, oh, no, but no, I can't say that. <laughs> um, and with all the chaos then in the world at the moment, where's the one place that you will go to for a bit of peace and quiet, a bit of calm? Home. Yeah, always, oh, isn't yeah. it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And where is home for you, Dean? Well, home for me, to be honest, is, is Dubai. Right. I mean, you know, it is... Um, I mean, you, you must have seen, you know, what, what it's turned into. You yep. know, it's, it's a metropolis, a steel kind of... And lots of There's tall a lot of buildings. Work, that's but for sure. I live in a beautiful villa with lovely yeah. water kind of running down the side. Mm. And, and they've done a fantastic job. Um, I, think, I think it sets a model mm -hmm. um, for a lot of countries. And... and, and um, it's one that a lot of people love to come to now. I mean, you know. We'll go for a holiday, Matt. Yeah. Sounds lovely. Yeah, well, no, it's great. Yeah. Come over Marhaban. and see you. Marhaban. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds wonderful. Well, okay. um, let's talk now then about the Radio 2 Folk Awards, Yusef, because it's happening tomorrow night. It's live on the radio at 7.30. And you are being presented with the Lifetime Achievement Award, must, which must feel fantastic to be recognised and awarded for, for your huge catalogue of work. Yeah, I think it's, um, it's great because it's, it's home. You know, I mean, for me, born, born here and, and, and having gone through the, the whole history of the folk scene, mm -hmm. you know, which uh, in the early 60s, mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, it all began with me, you know, uh, as, as one guitar and one boy, you know, 15 years old. And that, that was how it began. And um, my first, uh, you know, the, although I loved the Beatles, I couldn't do that because I didn't have a group. So my next kind of real, well, the big influence for me w w was the folk you know, music scene. Well, interestingly, you've already been recognised as far as rock and roll is concerned. How does, how does the folk compare to the rock and roll and that recognition? I oh, mean the one I got the other well, like, yeah. two two years ago. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> that was that was pretty good because you know yeah. it's like uh, Ringo's there. You know, well now he's there. I mean, well he's got it he's, as well. He came hasn't after he? me. Yeah, last but um, <laughs> you know, you've got all these incredible you know, Elvis and everybody. Yeah. Um, all in, in in that kind of rock and roll. So that was a good one. That was fantastic. Yeah. Right. But the folk thing is a great recognition of I think my roots. You know, and mm -hmm. and, and that's mm -hmm. that's to do with the music. It's not rock and roll. It's not flashy, um, and and it tells a real story. I think folk music. That that's what it does. It always was a, a narrative of, yeah. of lives, mm. of people's lives, real lives. So what will you be performing then tomorrow? Because you're also headlining the gig, aren't you? Yeah, um, yeah. I'll be performing two songs. One um, 
quite famous one, quite easy to play on the guitar, called Moon Shadow. Yes. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah. And the other one is Cat and the Dog Trap, which is the latest right. on my latest album, Tell Them I'm Gone. Well, we started uh, having a look at some of your earlier stuff. Let's have a look at some more recent. Here we go. I came to God the Pharaoh Bring him wine and women Oh, Lord Where is he now? We used to call him the highest Till the way took him down Did you write this one? Did you, say, did you write this? Yes, 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 yes. I did. I did. Mm. OK. So, sorry, go on. No, I was, I, I was just wondering, obviously with all of the early stuff that you've done and the, and the recent stuff you've got, do you have a song that's still very special to you from the earlier stuff? You know, um, I mean, recently I've started going back into the studio and recording, strangely enough, uh, some of my very early kind of songs oh, yeah. from, the, from the 60s. Mm -hmm. And, in fact, one of the songs... My f I, f I feel it was the first song I really properly finished, you know, I, I wrote. Uh, and that's going to be on, on the next album. So I, I revisit some of these songs. I like to revisit mm. sometimes the first cut is the deepest because people don't know I wrote that that's yours. Not Rod. <laughs> yeah. Or Cheryl or Crow, Cheryl. because yeah. she tried to rip it off as well, didn't she? Did she did well. <laughs> P.P. Arnold did it originally. Right. Um, and then Here Comes My Baby. You don't know I wrote that one too. Do, well, you may not even know that one. There you go. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, that was the tremolos back then. Um, so a few songs, but I, I, you know, in the beginning I was swinging between genres. I was, mm -hmm. I was rooted in folk, but I love musicals. I love the Beatles. I love yeah. Beethoven. I love, you know, the blues, R&B, blue beat. Mm -hmm. I mean, I soaked it all up because I lived in the centre of, of, of town, mm. you know, in the West End, yeah. Yeah. close to Soho. Well, no, close to Timpan Alley, let's call it that. Okay. And, um, and it, was, it was incredible, music all around. Yeah, and speaking of, of folk then, tomorrow night is also looking at new folk artists and awards and new folk artists who are coming through. Why do you think then, you obviously love it, but why do you think folk is still relevant and still plays such an important part? I think that it, it may be a, a bounce, a bounce off, um, but of the latest kind of music scene. The latest music scene is fantastic for productions and for singers and mm -hmm. image, you know. But when it comes to uh, content and poetic narrative, I think that's people want yeah. a bit more of that. I agree, yeah. You and know, you often find those, you know, the latest pop stars, they're doing a kind of stripped back version. I mean, Ed Sheeran, he's like, a, he's a classic yeah, example. Yeah, isn't I think he's stolen one or two of my little tunes. But, oh, no, yeah. I won't say <laughs> 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 The Radio 2 folk awards are live <laughs> on Radio 2 tomorrow night from half past seven. You breathe the dog that you've got. Yeah. And Yusuf, you were saying more of a cat man yourself. Yeah, like although my, my first you know, hit record was I Love My Dog. <laughs> Which is ironic, really. Oh, you don't know that, do you? No, I did know oh, that. Okay. A, I do research, oh, you know. Um, <laughs> you like this because Julie Craft has emailed in and she's taken it a whole step further because her cat, um, she's filmed the little cat. Here we are, playing with the iPad. Oh. Oh, oh, gorgeous. Which is, is cute, sweet. but if it gets access to a shopping site and clicks that buy now button, she's <laughs> really big bill. She could have very good taste. <laughs> Who knows? Can we have one more beautiful shot of Barney, Barney. Uh, down here? Because um, for all those that don't know, um, Barney's from the Dogs Trust and he hasn't got a home yet. Oh, um, he is lovely. I've so spent all afternoon with Barney and he's absolutely gorgeous. So please find Barney at home. Let's turn you around there, look, so everybody can see <coughs> your lovely sweet. face. There we are, look. Beautiful. <laughs> Anyway, Aww. yes, do get in contact if yes. you, um, who knows, if you fancy Barney. And thank you, Miranda. Pleasure, thank you very much. Uh, now to the story of a musician whose career path shared a few similarities with Yusuf here. Yes, a guitarist and a singer, uh, but this one goes by the name of Ronnie Lynn. His son, Luke, tells their story. Thank you so much to Luke for sharing his story. Incredibly sad story, very isn't sad. it? Very sad. Very it sad. Is. Yeah. Um, but you shared a memorable moment, didn't you, Yusuf, with the small faces? You knew them quite well, of course. Well, not really that well. I mean, they, they, were, they all looked very... They were titchy, you know. They were... Yeah. Sort of, <laughs> <laughs> and they had these small faces. So they all looked pretty similar. But uh, I remember, I remember travelling with them. We were doing these, you know, pop shows and TV gigs in Europe. Right. And uh, one memorable moment in midair, you know, when I suddenly turned back and I saw they were having a pillow fight with all these, like, cabin seat cushions. Oh. You know, oh, and, and of course, they're always... They're quite blotto, if you know what I mean. So um, <laughs> We get the picture. Yeah, yeah. So, but they were great guys. And, um, mm. and, you know, Ronnie, I mean, he was... Uh, 
an icon, and, and his, his, his group, Slim mm. Chance, my, my favourite guitarist and my companion for so many years, Alan Davis, has been in that group for many years, oh, yeah. actually, mm -hmm. playing his songs. So there's a real connection there, then. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Well, as we heard, I mean, Ronnie suffered mm. from M MS and you had tuberculosis, which gave you a different perspective on life. But am I right in saying that there was one incident in particular that took your life in a whole new direction? Yeah, I, I think sometimes we don't, <coughs> we don't expect it. And then something happens that gives you a whole new angle on your own life. Mm -hmm. And you realise you might have actually lost it at that moment and, and what happened to me was I was <coughs> I was swimming in Malibu and you know it was all very you know very twee and there was lots of rich people around I mean it was uh, the, uh, the the house of my record chief Jerry Moss and, um, and you know I went swimming stupid so what I did um, when I went out there I thought well you know didn't see anybody else out there no problem but then after a while I tried to come back to shore mm -hmm. and I couldn't you know, I'd lost all the power, you know, suddenly I felt like a jelly. Mm. And the only thing I could do was to call God, you know. I said, God, if you save me, I'll work for you, mm. you know. And that was a deal. And that's what happened. He saved me mm. and I came back to land. Yeah, and, he, and you struck the deal and as a result, you left music for the best part of 20 years. So why did you make the decision and how did the decision come about then to come back to it? Uh, lots of reasons. I mean, there was, you know, the, 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 the way in which the world was, was almost facing this terrible, this, this abyss of, uh, between, you know, cultures. And music has an incredible way of linking mm. us all together. Um, there are no colours, there are no nationalities in music, you know, there's, there's no borders. No. And, um, and then I discovered so many things about, you know, Muslim civilization and, and the fact that the guitar probably owes its origin, or at least the link, to the guitar through Islamic Spain, mm -hmm. uh, and which came then through Europe. The, the, the oud, right. al-oud, became the lute, you know, and then suddenly you've got, even the word troubadour comes from the Arabic, which means to entertain. Mm -hmm. So all these kind of linkages, I said, hang on. You can bring yeah. it back, hey. yeah. <laughs> but you know. Am I right in saying that you'd, you'd sold off all your guitars? I mean, did, did you feel yeah. the need to try and get in contact with them again? Because you have such a connection to your my, with your... My son account. did. He yeah. found my old black guitar, and I've still got, I've got it now. Okay. Uh, through my son, you know, he saw it on eBay somewhere. Oh, no, not eBay. It was, um, it was a friend of ours in, in the kind of guitar community who knew where it was. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we finally got it back. Mm. Do, you, do you regret that gap of 20 years at all? Or do you mm. think that it was just the way it was and, and you're quite happy with how things worked out? I'm, I'm a, I do things 100%. Mm. You know, I try to. And so, you know, when I became a Muslim, I wanted to do it right and I wanted to do everything properly. And I didn't have time. I, and and I, I found a new... A new, purpose, really. Yeah, a new purpose, yeah. exactly. And it clarified my purpose, I, although I had yeah. an instinct about it. You know, I'd mm. written songs like On the Road to Find Out, you know, um, and, uh, and Wild World, you know, mm. Leaving, perhaps. Um, and, you know, so all that created the backdrop, but then getting clarification on all these issues was really, yeah. really important. It's been yes. great talking to you, honestly. That's it. You can hear Yusuf receiving his Lifetime Achievement Award on the Radio 2 Folk Course tomorrow night, 7.30, Radio 2. Tomorrow we'll be here with Paul Bettany. Good night. Thanks again, Yusuf. Really Thank you. Thank you so Bye. much. Bye.